Pinus lambertiana, also known as sugar pines, have the longest pine cones and are the tallest and most massive pine tree in the world. They're native to California, southern Oregon, and northern Baja, Mexico. But since the early 1900s, sugar pines and other five needle pines have been dying at an alarming rate. 95% of all sugar pines are threatened by a deadly fungus known as white pine blister rust, which was accidentally introduced to North America over 100 years ago from Europe. Now, its spores have spread across most of the continent, triggering mass die-offs of sugar pines and other white pine species. With no end in sight, what can be done to save the world's tallest pine trees from extinction? The good news is that 3 to 5% of sugar pines have a natural resistance to this fungus, an immunity they inherited from the survivors of a historic blister rust infection in North America. Those ancient adaptations passed on in the seeds of resistant trees give their species a fighting chance to survive in the face of this devastating forest infection. But with increasing risk and frequency of fires, habitat loss, beetle infections, and other natural stresses on the remaining trees, the future of our sugar pines and other white pine forests will be quite challenging. Since 2004, the Sugar Pine Foundation has worked in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service and many local, state, and federal land managers to collect seeds, grow seedlings, and replant those resistant sugar pine seedlings around the Tahoe, Sierra, and foothills. Dozens of resistant trees have already been identified, so when we find a tree with lots of cones, we hurry to harvest as much seed as possible. It's a race between the elements, the wildlife, and the climbers to see who collects the most pine nuts before winter. Every year around September, the cones and their seeds are mature. The seeds naturally disperse when the cones open up and the wind blows the seeds out. On average, each sugar pine cone contains about 150 seeds. Hopefully, those seeds land in the soil and sprout next year as a new seedling, but only a fraction of those seeds will live long enough to grow a generation. Left up to nature, there wouldn't be enough resistant seeds and seedlings to repopulate our forests, and the fungus would eventually kill what's left of our sugar pines and other related trees. This is why the Sugar Pine Foundation climbs resistant trees, harvests their seeds, and plants their seedlings. These trees are very tall and have no limbs near the ground. So how does the climber actually get to the top? They use a giant slingshot. Yeah, a giant slingshot to shoot a bean bag tied to a thin cord over a branch. Then the climber pulls up a climbing rope and climbs the branches. Near the top of the tree, the climber builds an anchor. Then, before they start the harvest, they shout to the ground crew to clear the area. Then they set their sights on a cone and try to keep balance and a steady hand while they use a long-handled pruner to trim the cones off. If that doesn't work, they have to walk out on the limbs and shake the branches to get the cones to fall. After the climber finishes clearing a branch, they maneuver around the canopy looking for more cones. Meanwhile, the ground crew collects the fallen cones and places them in burlap sacks. This exhausting process continues until we get all or most of the cones. Once finished, the cones are sent to our nursery partners at Cal Forest and the U.S. Forest Service Nursery in Placerville. After a year at the nursery, we get thousands of seedlings to plant in our community restoration events. Every year during the spring and fall, we plant about 10,000 trees with volunteers, business partners, and supporting sponsors to ensure there are enough resistant trees in the forest for this species to survive. Bringing our community together and doing exciting restoration work is what makes the Sugar Pine Foundation the sweetest nonprofit in Tahoe.